Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Priya Chauhan and currently I am working as a cloud data engineer in Wipro and I have total years of experience as 3 plus. I have been working on this skill set uh, that is AWS services, Azure Data Factory, Hadoop ecosystem, okay, and SQL services also. So I've been working with this for the past three years. And uh, today I'm going to present you all Azure Data Factory. We'll do perform some hands-on activities on also. So stay with me till the end and uh, let's get started. Okay, here you can see the agenda for today. That is, we'll firstly look into the introduction to Azure Data Factory. Then we'll have a simple overview or you can say high level overview of how an ETL pipeline look like. We'll also see then the workloads that are supported by Azure Data Factory. We'll see what a data driven workflow look like when it comes to Azure Data Factory. We'll also see some of the core components of Azure Data Factory. After that, we'll do have some hands-on in between the session. And then we'll see in detail what is integration runtime when it comes to ADF. I'll use this word frequently in the session ADF, which means Azure Data Factory. We'll also look into the security part later in the session. So that's the agenda. Let's start the very first slide that is Azure Data Factory. Now, what is it? You can think of it as a simple, in a simple language, you can think of it as an ETL tool, not working on the on-premises, but a cloud-based ETL tool. Okay. It is in data integration services as said by the official documentation, which allows us to build complex ETL pipelines. Here ETL stands for extraction, transformation, and loading. And this orchestrates our pipeline. Here, orchestrate means that is, let's say we have an ETL pipeline which says that, okay, copy data from Oracle DB to an S3 stage or to an Azure blob storage, and then it should proceed with data loading into the Azure SQL DB. So this flow, which task should run first, which task should run after that, this is called orchestrated. So, it's supposed to orchestrating and also we can schedule our pipelines in the ADF environment from and also apart from that, we have many data stores by which we can ingest our data sources and we can build up. So that's about the introduction part. Let's move forward. Here you can see how an ETL pipeline looks like. The, these you can see whether it is a structured database, whether it is some unstructured, unstructured files here, we can extract it with the help of ADF, okay? And then we do have a business requirement of, okay, if a client says, okay, you do have some duplicates in source databases, so you, you do have to perform the data processing. So that comes under, middle part that is in the apache spark cluster mostly we'll look later in the session where it will implement it okay you can just uh, relate to an hadoop environment how it will look like in hadoop and then finally once the etl pipeline is built the business will uh, business wants to see that final and transform data in a data visualizer tool. It can be a Power BI or it can be your click application. So that is how an ETL pipeline will look like. Let's move forward. We have some category of workloads which ADF supports. It do support the centralized data storage. That is, we can have you know, data coming from multiple transaction systems. Okay, you can say, call it as a OLTP. And then we can load that into relational databases. So ADF do supports that, that comes under modern data warehouse systems. We do have a advanced analytics workloads where we can integrate different source system into our Azure data lake store. 
it can be azure data lake gen 1 or gen 2 depending on the business use case okay it can initiate the compute resources that is azure databricks that is an analytics service out of this session and uh, we have this uh, hd insight so hd insight you can call it as a just we has a hadoop cluster in on premises so hd insight is a cloud version of hadoop you can consider it like that so we can do that to perform some advanced analytic work okay so that comes under advanced analytic workloads so these were the two types of workloads that adf supports now let's come to the important component that what are the data driven workflows in adf we will see in our labs also like uh, if you are working in a project as an azure data factory engineer you will see like you have to extract data from multiple data sources okay and then you have to perform some transformation or you can say you have to perform some deduplication of the data or let's say it can have to only extract the latest values from the data so that will come under transformed and analyze phase okay so preparation here stands for to create the data sets we'll see later in the session how we are going to create the data sets before we are extracting the data sets we have to first create the data sets we have to create the linked services so don't go with this technical words we'll explain all this later on okay once this is done we do have an option called publish for now you can consider this publish as a save button uh, as you work in your windows so whatever you know editing you do in your code editor you have to save it also so in azure data factory while building our pipelines whatever changes we are doing whether we are you know extracting the data whether we are doing some transformation we do have to save that and in order to save that we have a uh, option called publish button okay once it is published we can just trigger it and we can schedule also and after that we can integrate that to a power bi connector so that data can be imported into that okay so this is about data driven workflows now let's come to the important components of AW, adf okay firstly we have length server i want to explain it brief so i open my notepad plus plus okay let's say uh, open it okay we have this linked service let's say uh, i'll take an example to explain this linked service Let's say you have a task, you have given a task to build an EPL pipeline. Now your extract uh, method, your extract DB will be, let's say Oracle DB, okay? This is your source DB, okay? Then we have, uh, you know, destination DB also. There will be some destination where you want to load your data. Let's say it's uh, SQL DB, okay? And in between, you do have some transformation step. Let's say, to keep it simple, we have some duplicate data, so you will perform some deduplication, okay? So in order to, you know, see the data of source, you will connect to that Oracle DB. And the admins of your source team will do provide you a grant on that source table which you want to extract okay so while setting up the connection connection setup okay to that source db or to that you know target db that is nothing it is called linked service in adf so it is similar to a connection string that is connection stream and that is really important con concept when it comes to azure data factory okay 
now this uh, this will become more clear when we you know perform some hands on activities okay now we have uh, let me go on to the present mode you can say that uh, the official documentation says that link service will enable you to ingest the data from multiple sources in order to get the prepared data or do some transformation okay now let's come to this data set now what is this data set it represent data structure within the data store that is being referenced by the link service i'll again go to my notepad plus plus data set we can call it as a named view of data in simple words it will be referencing our link service okay without this link service we can't create a data set okay for any of these let's say for source or for destination so this link service is related to this data set okay so that is about a data set let's again go to the presenter board okay and it can also be used by an adf object known as an activity now what is an activity okay if we look into the simple example extraction transformation and loading these are individual tasks you can say but in azure data factory we call it as a activity okay we can have a simple activity called copy activity which ingests data from a variety of data sources now the copy activity may look like like this if we have a copy activity it can be like you know copy files from one blob container to another one okay it can be like copy files from your blob storage to your sql db so these are the example of some copy activities that we are going to perform in a while okay we have this mapping data flow mapping data flow is nothing but you will be able to you know see the transformation in a graphical view so whatever we are doing adf will help us to visualize that whatever we are doing okay it can be activity can be like stored procedure execution we can create a stored procedure ex execution okay it can be stored in anywhere like azure block storage and we can provide the path and we can create it okay it can be a hive query execution it can be a pick script execution and also it can help data scientists to push data into machine learning model to perform some analysis okay so it's time to do some lab let me open my azure portal so i'll open my new azure portal in front of you so that you will be able to understand so we have this link called portal.azure.com okay so the portal will look like this as you are learning this azure data factory you should have uh, you know uh, understanding why we need an adf okay we are mainly dealing with big data when it comes with big data so in the current uh, scenario big data is a problem and with this problem we are solving this problem with the help of you know various tools now the company will opt to the cloud only for big data it will not opt for you know small bunch of data let's say 1 mb 100 mb when we are dealing with petabytes of data and the you know storing is not compatible with the current res on premises resources we have then we have to go for the services then we call it as a big data you might have heard of the five v's of big data that is why 
we should have a prior understanding of big data okay and uh, the prerequisite says that uh, no uh, that we don't need to you know learn anything before learning adf but i will recommend to learn at least big data fundamentals to understand you know sql to understand what is a spark cluster because we'll be using that yeah so that is why it's very important to understand all these resources now in front of you i'll create an azure data factory resource so i'll simply type azure factory i've already created one but i'll show you how i created let's say i i'll just go to create a resource here i'll type out data factory you can see it has come up in the drop down and now i'll click on create you will see this rich documentation every time whenever you creating a resource okay so it do provides a rich documentation which you can utilize uh, in your to understand your current project requirements or you know to uh, get the certification also so i'll hit on create you can see i have used my subscription but if you have pay as you go subscription you can use your uh, required subscription i'll use my created resource group that is i have created if you don't have you can just create on create new and then you can give it any unique name the naming standard should be aligning to your use case that is a best practice you can give your instance details let's say adf tutorial okay you can give your nearest region in order to save cost and i'll will be okay the data factory name is already taken let's say give it today date and it will work yeah you can say you have to be uh be you have to take a unique name so that it will consider otherwise just remember that whenever it is a green tick that means you have created a valid name that is a unique within your subscription okay when let's talk about the region so i select central india here and the version will be v2 next if we click on next uh, it will ask of ask us for configure get later or not so azure data factory do provides us option to integrate our data factory with azure devops or with github now why it is important whenever we are working working in real time project okay so we do require some auditing purpose okay who have created this pipeline okay we want that okay this person needs to be create a link service only and no other person is allowed to create that link service in order to do that you should have a git version enabled we are not going to uh, do that because it's a advanced topic so we are going to do that configure git later i'll check this box next i'll go on to networking you have to leave everything as it is make sure this is selected as a public endpoint and not as private endpoint we do have this advanced option so we'll keep it as it is next we have this tags this tags are uh, uh, optional so whenever you are working in real time project you know you will be working in dev environment you will be working in production environment so in that case you know business will use this key value pairs as tags that so that it will be helpful when ever a resource will look into the resources section of adf okay i'll not hit on review plus create because i've already created a data factory that i'll show you so what happens when you click on review plus create it will first do a validation that will take a minute 
and then you can just create your resource and it will be deployed in a couple of minutes i just click on home i'll go to my all resources that i have created you can see here i have created my data factory with this name that is adc hyphen df hyphen dev you can see the overview which states some metadata information about my adf that i have created the location uh, the resource group in which it is uh, created the type that is the version okay everything is available here now we do have this azure data factory studio wherein we'll be building our pipelines so i'll click on this open so the very first lab activities that we are going to perform is copying a file from one of the blob containers to another container so that is a very simple activity in order to understand how a simple data pipeline is built so this is the simple ui you can see we have various option we have this ingest option you can relate it to extract which help us to copy data from multiple data sources that is available over adf we have this orchestrate that helps us to build our data pipelines we have this transform data option that is nothing but a data flow that we have seen just before and it also provide us to configure and manage our ssis package so yes adf do help us to execute our ssis packages okay so this is a simple you know ui overview now as i mentioned in the lab activity we are going to you know make use of this blob container also so in order to make use of this blob container we have to create one blob containers files shares queues all these comes under storage account okay so these are part of the azure storage account so in order to make use of that we have to create that so i again go to home section i'll create a resource i'll type storage account once i type it will reflect in the drop down i'll hit on create okay here you can see uh, the details are similar to that we have seen before while creating the adf you have to give your unique name let's give data storage 1208 for today's date okay again you can select any region let's look for the india region okay let's click on this central india and uh, this is very important concept when it comes to redundancy of your storage account we have many option but for this session we are going to choose locally redundant storage now what does this mean it means your data will be replicated within a single data center okay when you click on this it means your data will be replicated over a region okay so multiple data centers the same goes with zone redundant storage storage okay so if the data is very critical so we can opt for this zone redundant storage and when it will be implemented in case like that case may be happen in which a uh, entire region fails it means whatever the data centers was residing in the region all the data centers have failed due to some disaster issue okay in that case we have to opt this zone redundant storage and that too when the data is very critical so these all options depends on your business use case for this session i'm going to choose this lrs okay that is locally redundant storage i'll click on advance okay 
you can see i have enabled this blob public access it doesn't mean that anyone uh, you know access can access my blob it only means whatever user is added to this directory or have access to this subscription can access this blob storage okay now whether we have to create this data lake storage gen2 account we are not going to do that we have only to create this blob storage okay we are going to use this hot because who storage it a little bit costly okay now let's click on networking and now let's click on the data protection okay so this everything will be as it is and now you can click on review and create i'll not hit this button because i have already created it i'll show you that yeah here it is you can see this is my storage account and where i can see my containers you can consider container as you know just like a folders in your uh, your machine here you can see we have multiple folders okay as we are in ada adf we'll talk we'll say this containers okay multiple containers we have i'll create a new container let's say this is our input data okay i'll hit on create once i've created that i'll open that input data i have a file firstly i'll show you that file emp.txt file which i have used from microsoft documentation let's open that so it has this data you can see it as comma delimited it can be pipe del delimited it can be tab delimited it can be anything okay so the copy tool do provides to specify you know to avail us that option so that we can specify a particular delimiter according to our use case okay here you can see we have this upload blob option and here we can select our files so this is our files i'll click on upload you can see upload has been completed we can you know view this data within this container when i click on edit you can see we have this data okay i can just close this now we have the input data we want this input data to be transferred to some output directory okay now before that we do have to create a output container let's say this is our output container i'll create a new one for you so that you will have a better idea container output data okay i'll hit on create okay so you can see this output data is currently okay this is not the one this output data that we have recently created is currently empty it has no files our goal is to transfer emp.txt data to this location and we'll do that with the help of azure data studio okay i'll create a duplicate tab here okay we have already opened that azure data factory studio we'll make use of this you know ui based tool we'll click on ingest we want to run this once we don't want to schedule or we also don't want to use the tumbling window next now the very first step i'm doing is to create a connection this connection is nothing but i am actually going to create a linked service okay now for every type of different resource you have to create a linked service let's say you have oracle db you have to create a linked service if it is a blob storage you have to create a linked service for that blob storage okay so it will be specific to a resource here i'll type azure blob storage i'll hit i'll click on continue 
you can give it any name let's say emp blob connection okay you can also give a description here we are seeing this auto resolve integration runtime now this is very important concept what is integration runtime in order to execute this pipeline we need some infrastructure so when it comes to you know on premises hadoop we do have a hadoop cluster which take cares of all iops you know everything the compute the cpu memory everything but what happens when it comes to adf the same thing is integration runtime the compute environment which this link service will refer to build a connection also the copy activity will use the same integration runtime to execute the pipeline okay so it act as a bridge between link service and a particular activity okay so if we look into the ppt we do have some definitions from this uh, official documentation so it says compute infrastructure used by azure data factory and azure synapse pipelines to provide the data integration capabilities across network requirements okay so this is what a uh, integration runtime in a simple words it just a compute environment nothing else here i have taken authentication type as account key okay it can be anything it can be a shared access signature it can be a service principle but for now we are going to use a account key why this is important in order to access that blob storage okay now i am going to select my subscription that is this azure pass i'll select my name it will automatically come up okay if we have multiple uh, storage accounts multiple will be reflected here okay now you can just test your connection just to see whether this link service is able to connect that blob storage or not let's see you can say the connection is successful i'll click on create you can see i have successfully established a connection to a blob storage okay i'll browse the files which are present there you can see here this is the container we created okay this is the file we need i'll click on okay okay so as you can see we have file in place we don't want to you know we do not have multiple files so we are going to select this binary copy and then we'll click on next now our destination so again it will be azure blob storage i'll click on continue so the steps are similar blob connection 2 okay to a link service i'll again choose my subscription option again my account name okay i'll just click on create okay also if we have already a link service because my sort my destination is same as sort so it is also possible that we use the earlier service earlier link service that is blob connection okay that we have created so that is also possible in order to save cost again we can browse the files we'll just hit on this folder and we'll click on okay so this is our destination folder we'll leave everything as it is we'll hit on next let's say copy emp data pipeline let's say okay 
now i'll click on create as you can see it has provided a graphical view where your sources and what is your destination we have a proper metadata here and we can click on next and you can see it is validating our pipeline within a few minutes it will be deployed okay so this pipeline is in running state you can see it is succeeded meaning whenever i go to and refresh this you can see here earlier it was empty but i can see the data which was present in our input folder if i edit in it i can see the exact data that was present there okay so i'll click on close and this completes our lab activity one where it is yeah i can you know either click on finish or if it is still running okay in terms of large data we can click on monitor also if we click on monitor you can see this was a manual trigger as it was not scheduled and it is succeeded okay we can just click on it and we can rerun we can debug okay we can do anything with these respective options so this was our lab 1 without wasting any time let's move to lab activity 2 that is copy data from blob storage to an azure sql db you can see two sources mentioned here one is our blob storage our destination is azure sql db we do have this blob storage but we don't have this azure sql db so let's create that and i'll go again go to home section i'll create a resource here i'll type sql database let me azure sql database no i think this is not the one let me click on database here yeah here it is okay again the similar steps you can either you know put your all resources in a single group okay that i have done or else you can create a new resources for your data related sources that is your sql db your uh, gen2 account your blob storage anything you can give a unique name here okay let's say this is a unique name which is accepted uh this is the server name okay it is already populating because i have already created that but i'll show you how to create the server in order to run your database you need a server okay let's say we can give our server name like this sql server adf test okay the location will be same as the central india let's go to central india okay here it is not given here it is central india okay for authentication we are going to use sql authentication that is a username and a password let's give a unique username let's say sql usr let's say password is you have to remember your password because later on it the ui that is the ui of azure sql db will not reflect the password details it will only reflect the other details that is your login name your location and your server name so let's give any strong password okay and to confirm it and then i'll hit on okay okay done i will use my earlier created uh, db here sorry server here i don't want to use any sql elastic pool okay 
workload environment ikp test development now this is again important the compute and storage part we need to configure database for this if you look upwards for this selected configured database the cost will be this much that is 392 inr okay but we are going to select a different one let's say configure database for this session we are going to you know we have less demanding workloads the data is not so huge we are going to use a basic dtu model this dtu is database transactional units now what is it again a compute option as it is understandable what it does it is a bundle of uh, you know uh, compute your memory your ram your everything okay whatever is needed to run a database you can also compare the various dtu options available here i am keeping as let's say i have only 500 mb of data i click on apply okay and then i'll click on review and create that is it only the important part was the compute and storage part and your server details you can see here estimated cost based on the configuration we have given it is on the basis of per month not per day or anything it is for per month whatever we use if you are doing it for practice session i'll recommend to delete your resources once you are done with it i'll not hit on review plus create because i already had one i'll just go to my home i'll say okay i'll show you where my db is so this is my sql database okay this is the one here you can see this is my sql database with location with networking and all the things okay now you can use you know query auditor given over here uh, inbuilt query auditor here okay but i i will use my azure microsoft sql server management studio okay i am going to use one log.csv files and i'll show you how it looks like log.csv i'll click on open okay opening this will not take much time yeah here you can see the data available this is just the log data of uh, operations done in a particular resource okay so this is id correlation in every column respective to this with this i have created a table in my sql server management studio like this okay let me show you the dl how i created i'll open up my not notepad plus plus you can see i'll copy this dl and i'll just do control v once you are into the sql server management studio you may have to connect to your database how you will do it you will click on this database engine you will type your sql server name and how you will going to type it you can find it over here that is here you can see the name here right you can just copy that and you can paste it in your ssms yeah in the authentication part i use sql server authentication you can give your login name you can give your password and you can click on connect and you will be connected seamlessly i'll click on close i have some databases created over here okay so whatever database you need to query with you can just click on it you can click on right click okay and you can just open up a new query okay 
so with that you will be querying in that particular database okay you can also that use this db use that db that will also work here i am creating table definition like this i given a table name that is log data okay and these are the required uh, column details okay i have already created it that is why i am not hitting on create or execute let's see this now in order to uh, okay let's go with the blob storage okay i'll go to home i'll go to my storage account i'll open up my containers i'll create a brand new container that is called log input data okay i'll click on create under this log input data i'm going to upload my log.csv file okay it's already there i'll hit on upload okay within some minutes it will be uploaded as you can see it is uploaded here our job our job is to transfer this data into our azure sql db okay now before that let me delete the data here delete from let me right click new query delete from log data i'll i'll select all this i'll hit on execute now if i click on select star from log data it might not it should not have any data okay so the previous query is still executing okay 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 while this is executing we will look into creating the pipeline for it okay we'll see the steps how we can do that we are in the author section now okay we'll hit on this plus section we'll hit on this pipeline and we'll create a new pipeline named as log pipeline okay it's not lag it's log the very first step is copy data okay again we are copying the data let's provide us a name log copy okay we have to give a source information now what is our source we do need to create a data set for it okay so let's create a data set a brand new data set that is azure blob storage i'll hit on continue i'll hit on as it is a csv file i'll hit on continue here this data set i'll name as log data set i'll use my already created link service that is azure blob storage one i'll browse my file okay and then i'll open this container i'll select this file i'll click on okay here i want my first row as header i want my schema to be imported from that connection store i'll click on okay okay so this is done you know you can also uh, do some more stuff here you can see skip line count option is also given recursively you can also enable partition discovery and all but we are not going to do that uh, with this data set now we can click on sync here our sync is azure sql database okay let's click on azure sql database here i have i'll click on continue i use my already created link service okay i'll load the table name 
that is dbo.log data. I'll click on OK. OK. Here, my sync is already done. We have to insert the data. We have a table option, none or auto create table. We already created the table, so we don't need to create. But if you have not created, you can use this option and it will some, provide you some features to create it here itself. You can see we have this mapping also. We'll import schema here. Here you can see we have a proper data mapping. Everything from the input is taken it as string. And here you can see the data types are currently uh, correctly mapped with the SQL DB. That is ID will be int, this ID will be vertical. Okay, we are done with mapping also. Let's see the data integration. We'll keep it as auto. We do not need to do this parallelism because it's only 8 MB. Okay, and now we can just debug our data pipeline. Debug means we are actually executing this pipeline. Okay, it is queued within a couple of minutes. It will be in a progress mode. You can see it is in progress. Okay. Let's see whether this data is deleted or not. Yeah, it is deleted. The, we were having this 76114 rows. Let, we can also, you know, click on this monitor section and we can see our pipeline here. But firstly, we have to publish this in order to get reflected our pipeline in the monitor section. So we will publish all this. Okay, we'll save this. And if you scroll to the right, it is succeeded. I'll add the trigger and I'll say trigger it now. It says that we have to trigger it using the last pipeline configuration. I'll say on OK. And then I'll go to the monitor section to see my pipelines here. OK. Let's. OK. It should have pipeline runs. Let's refresh this. OK, I think it will take some time to refresh. I'll trigger it again. I'll click on OK. OK, so it is running. And also, we can see the notification here whether it is running or not. So we can see our pipeline is succeeded, meaning we will be able to see the data in this log data table. As you can see, all the rows were deleted, but whenever I ran my pipeline, I, whenever I triggered my pipeline manually, it has data uploaded from my Azure blob storage container. So this was a, another, you know, simple copy activity with some different resource and destination option. We are done with this activity. We have another activity uh, called Priya. mapping data flow. So Priya, with this Priya, session, Priya, Priya. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, actually, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, could you just wrap it out because we have already yeah, yeah. extended the time. Like it was like the session was of only 30 minutes, but it's about an hour. So if you can skip the third lab, if you can skip the third lab, it will be good for us. Okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I'll resume it now. Okay, so we are done with our lab activities. We've already seen this integration runtime, that is data flow, data movement. Activity dispatch is nothing but whenever a copy activity executes in a compute cluster, we say it activity dispatch. This is SSIS package execution with ADF supports. So this is about the integration runtime. OK, we do have this types of integration runtime. That is the Azure one, which we have just run seen. We have a call, a IR called self-hosted and also to execute our SSIS packages. OK, 
the very important part in order to create a pipeline in order to do some stuff with the adf we should have a contributor role so that is it with the security section and we do have these points considerably last section of this uh, session that is references i have taken with this session that is the microsoft documentation that is it hope you enjoyed the session thank you